All right. Hey, we are going to be in chapter 12, but I'm going to kind of review last week, actually a little bit of everything, just to get us where we're going to go. So uh, catch everybody up. The book of the Revelation says that there's a blessing because we read it, because we listen to it, and because we heed what it says. And that this book is, is, is a prophecy. It is, um, it is uh, a revealing, and it is also a letter. And so we've been looking at that. We saw that John is writing this on the Isle of Patmos, having been visited by God himself, who said, I want you to write these things down and send these out to the seven churches, which are in Asia Minor, uh, which is where John had a lot of itinerant preaching. That's where he, his ministry was. And so what we're reading is a letter, and it's a, it's a revealing uh, an apocalypse, if you will, and it is prophecy. That is foretelling, not just the things that are going to happen, but foretelling truth of those things that have happened, are happening, and are will be happening. And so this is what we're looking at. And so we saw uh, in, in here that there was, um, this is now the third vision that John had. The first vision he had was of Christ. And so we saw that in chapter, uh, in chapter one as he revealed who, that, 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 who Christ was that had came, come to him and asked him to write these things down. And so then uh, we, we looked at seven letters. We did that rather quickly, the seven letters, and we saw some things there. And then the, the second vision that he had, remember we're looking at these as, as, as like uh, curtains that are being pulled back and we're able to see into some things that are taking place. And so uh, the second curtain that we saw besides Christ uh, we saw the throne room of heaven. Remember, we saw that door that was open, and John was caught up into that. And when he, what he looked through there, he saw a, a throne standing there, and he saw God sitting on that throne. And around it was 24 uh, other thrones, and they were elders, and they had crowns on their head, and there was a sea of glass between them. And we know that there's an altar up there, and martyrs are underneath that altar as well, and there's a bowl of incense there. And we've seen all of those things. We saw the four creatures, the seraphim, uh, there, each with a different looking head, but but in their wings were like eyes all around. And 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 so we saw all of this. We saw the angels that, that do their bidding. This this is what we saw in that place. And then we saw a scroll that was in the hand, and John began to weep because he's like, everybody else is like, who, who, who's worthy to open this scroll? That scroll is like the roadmap of life. It's, it's like how God gets the whole state of mankind back where it was. During the fall, this scroll unveils and tells exactly what God's going to do to redeem his people. And so people, the, the people in heaven are like, we want to see what that is. And so they said, There's, who's worthy? And, and John's weeping like, is there anybody? And the man who had guided him up there said, you don't have to cry. The lion from the tribe of, root, uh, of, of, of David, of Judah, from the, the root of David, he is worthy. Now that's what he heard. But remember we looked last week, but what he saw was a lamb slain. And so that is the, there's a lot of what he sees and, or what he hears and then what he sees and they're somewhat different. And then we saw him unfurl those, uh, those trumpets and those trumpets started with the four horsemen and, we, and we, we won't go all the way through that. But if we look at the trumpets and we step back and we see this 30,000 foot flyover, we realize that those trumpets is God revealing what it, what's going to happen and what is happening because it mirrored Matthew 24 where Jesus said, you can expect these things. So these are things that started in the day of Jesus and are still playing themselves out. But what, what the trumpets do is give us a view of what it looks like for those of us who are believers. And then last week we saw that the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that the, 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 uh, the seals, the, the trumpets uh, that we looked at last week reveal what it looks like from the vantage point of the world. And so we, we realized as we saw those trumpets unfold, it's almost a mirror of what happened when Egypt was in rebellion and wouldn't let his people go, and he sent the plagues. And so we almost see chapter 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, reveal the same thing. And so from man's vantage point, God is bringing judgment, plagues, if you will, on the land. And so we saw that. We saw that there was going to be hail. That's coming. Now, some of this is future, right? But a third of the earth was, was burned up and a third of the trees 
and 100% of all the grass. Now, that hasn't happened yet, but we know that this is one of the things that's coming. So this is a continuation of those things. So there was hail, just like there was uh, in the plagues. There was the blood, right? The mountain was, that was burning was hurled into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures died, and a third of the ships and so we see that this is what's what's coming. We saw uh, we saw poisoned water, right? The star from heaven fell. Third of the waters. Lots of people are dying. God is going to be judging the world, and this is what it's going to look like. And this is what the people who do not know Him will see. And so we went through that. There was darkness. Remember, uh, a third of the, the sun is struck, and and so all of that took place. And there was a fallen star that opened up. The abyss, there's going to come a time. And those were the locusts in the book of the Revelation. Remember the locusts that took place in Egypt as well. This, though, is not just a locust. This is the demonic realm that has been imprisoned in the abyss. Satan will be allowed to unleash that and to wreak havoc on this earth. And so we're going to see a demonic onslaught on the earth. And this is what this is what the, the unbeliever will we'll be experiencing. And so you see that that takes place. And then it says many are harmed. And here's who he says are harmed though. Harm only those without the seal of God on their forehead. Right? So this isn't, this isn't going to, just like the people of Israel in Egypt's bondage didn't get harmed during that, neither will those who are believers in Christ. These are judgments that's coming uh, on those who do not yet profess Christ. And so uh, we, we saw that their leader was Apollyon and so we went through all of that. I don't want to belabor the point. I just want us to understand that, that this is what's going on. And at each one of those, you see that there comes a point where there's going to be a judgment. Christ is coming back. He will rule the world. He will set things right. And so that's what we've seen uh, so far in our studies as we, as we wandered through that. So today we come to chapter 12. And if you remember a few years back, this was one of our Christmas messages. This is the dragon that belongs in the nativity, right? But it's not just that. This is one of those then and now, uh, this and that. And so as we begin to, to walk through this, I, I want us to see uh, this is the big picture of just what's going on in the world. And, and we're going to see what... Um, what we should expect, we should expect to see Satan attack us through this life. So again, this isn't like a continuation of a timeline that a lot of people want you to see. Okay, well, this happens and this happens and this. You Men can do that and they can try and make this say what it says. I'm more concerned to just let it say what it says as opposed to trying to interpret it and, and say, well, these locusts mean these, you know, Apache helicopters or whatever it is that men want to make it out to be. We're just going to understand that John is seeing some, hearing something, and then he sees something. And so this is that curtain. And so let's just look at it together. He says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars, and she was pregnant. And she cried out, being in uh, labor and in pain, giving birth. And so the first thing we see is that there is a woman. Uh, now, it's easy to interpret that as Mary because, in fact, there is that that is taking place. But it also um, is Israel itself. Let me read to you a section uh, in, in Isaiah that will make sense to us. In Isaiah 66, it says this about Israel. Before she was in labor, she delivered. Before her pain came, she gave birth to a boy. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a land be born in one day? Can a nation be given birth all at once? As soon as Zion was in labor, she was also delivered her sons. She, uh, shall I bring to the point of birth but not give delivery, she said? Oh, or shall I who give delivery shut up the womb, says your God? What we're reading there is that this is the birth of, of Israel also, right? So this is Sarah, and it is also Mary. And so you see it played out there in, in, this, in this deal. And so we go back and look at it again, and it says, it says this. It says, so these are the players that are going on. A great sign appeared in heaven, and a woman clothed the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head and a crown of 12 stars. And she was pregnant. She cried out in great labor pains. And so 
we see that God is birthing both a Messiah and a nation. And so this is, this is another window that we're looking into. And then he says this, And then another sign appeared in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head were seven crowns, and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and hurled them down to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour the child. So we're seeing a couple of scenes here. We're seeing the nation of Israel being born. But we're also seeing the birth of a Savior being born. And then we're seeing a dragon. So we're seeing, an, we're seeing God and we're seeing His enemy. right? So these are, this is what he's seeing. He's seeing a red dragon. Now, we talked about that when we did Christmas. And we said that that, that, that was Satan. Remember when Satan wanted to... He didn't even want Jesus to be born. And so when he thought that was going to happen, there were several things he did. He put it in the heart of Herod to begin to kill all the, the children two years and under because he wanted to make sure that, that, that Christ never made it uh, to the cross, that he never made it where he was going to go. And so we see that this was taking place, and so he wanted to prevent even the Christ from, from being born. He did that at the very beginning as well. Remember in Genesis when it says that, uh, that, that she will uh, bruise, his, he, uh, cr uh, uh, bruise her heel, but she shall crush him? That is a promise that there, that there was going to be a seed. From that seed was going to come one who would destroy Satan. And so when that's why he got Cain to kill Abel. And that's why you see this destruction that was going on constantly. So that by the time of Noah, uh, ten generations from, from, uh, from Adam, uh, God is saying, man, I'm sorry I made man. And so you see, you see that Satan is constantly trying to destroy God's people. He was trying to eradicate Moses, so that he couldn't be the deliverer, right? You, you see it all the way through there. Death is one of those things that Satan is, is after. This is what he wants. What does it say that the thief comes to do? Steal, kill, and to destroy. And so this is that picture. What we're seeing in the book of the Revelation isn't something new. You can see it all the way through the scriptures. We're just seeing the schemes of Satan unfold in, in, in this book. And so... Um, now, you can say that that's Satan, and it is, but it is also uh, just evil personified. It is, it is every nation. When it says that there are uh, seven uh, heads and ten horns, and some of will see that uh, as, as, when you see heads, you see that as signs of authority. Throughout the scriptures, that's kind of what that is. In Daniel's vision, that's what he saw uh, of, of different nations that would come and would rise. And so there's authority in the ten horns. Horns always represent some sort of strength. And so, so we see that whatever's going on, Satan has authority over the powers of this world and an authority to begin to, to create havoc. You, you see that in almost... Have you ever seen a government that really ever made anything better, right? I mean, it's always... It always consumes. It's always about its authority, and it's always trying to exert its strength. And so this is this is what's taking place here. And and so so we see that unfold. And so in in uh, and and so so you're seeing. We can look at this in two ways. We can see Mary, and we can see Satan trying to prevent Jesus from being born. And then we're going to see that he was born anyway. But you can also see it as Sarah and the nation of Israel. And, and, uh, and then Satan trying to destroy the nation of Israel, yet God will always have his remnant, right? And then you see the Messiah born that will redeem Israel that has fallen. And so this is what we're seeing in the book of, of this uh, revelation right here. And it says, And she gave birth to a son, a male, who is going to rule all of the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there she would be nourished for 1260 days. And so we look at this and we realize that, that this is a picture of the Messiah that, is, that has come, right? And so he came. Do you remember what happened? The wise men came to talk to Herod. To say, hey, we saw a star. We're trying to, trying to find the, the Christ child who, who is going to be king of the Jews, right? And Herod is like, oh, hey, man, why don't you? Yeah, when you find him, let me know. For what reason? Because every government 
wants to maintain their authority and their strength. And so he had one goal in mind, to kill that child. And so when he, when the wise men were wise enough not to go back to Herod and give him the skinny on the deal, then he decided, I'm going to kill every, every male born, two years of old age and under. And what, what, what did uh, the wise men tell Mary and them to do? To flee to Egypt, right? And so this is that picture uh, that we see. Now, some will see this as a forward thing, and they're going to write, see the 1260 days and lump it with Daniel, and I believe there's a lot of movement there, but a lot of it is guesswork, and I'm not interested in guessing what this thing says. I just want us to see the picture of what it does say. And what it does say is that God has created a remnant of people. There is an evil one that is seeking to destroy that, and he has prepared the, the one who will rule with a rod iron and will destroy all evil and will maintain the household of God. This is what we're seeing. This is, this is what we're reading. Now, we can, like I say, we can imagine a thousand things, but what we know we're reading is that. And so then it says this, And there was war in the heaven. Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war and they did not prevail and there was no longer a place found in heaven for them. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to earth and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice from, uh, in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren and sister has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. So what are we seeing here? Well, we're seeing that there's a war in heaven. Now, that war most likely took place before uh, Adam and Eve were even around. And Satan decided that he would be like God. You can read about that in Isaiah. And, uh, and so he assaulted God himself. And he convinced a third of the angelic forces to go with him. And he lost that battle and he was hurled to earth. And so now he gets to pretend that he is ruler of this earth, that he is the God of this world. Uh, and so he's wrecking havoc on everything of God because he hates God so much. And he could not defeat God. He's decided to come after God's creation. That's what you see taking place. That's the destruction that he sees. And so he's after, that's why he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. We're going to look in a minute just in kind of what those things look like. But this is what's taking place. And so there is a war going on. There's a war going on for you. There's a war that's going on for the next generation. There's a war that's going on, and it will continue to go on. The good news, which we just read, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, right? So, listen, it hasn't happened yet, not in our world, but from God's vantage point, it's already happened. That's why he says salvation has come, right? The kingdom of this world. Satan is already defeated, and he's dead, and he just doesn't know it. That's what's going on. And so what we're seeing is, a, is, a, is an all-out assault. And this is what we should be reading as we see this book of the Revelation and we hear about what's going on. We should know that the evil one is trying to maintain darkness and deadness and division. Does this make sense to us? We should see this. And so you and me, that's why, that's why you and me are the light of the world, right? That, that's, that's why you and me have life in this inner gate power from on high, from the Spirit of Christ. And the Spirit of Christ gives us life. And then we have the ability to knock down division with love, right? So we have light, life, and love. These are the three things that were lost at the fall. Satan is determined that this world stay in darkness, and they stay death and dead, and they stay in division with each other. You want to know why our world is chaotic? It's because that's Satan's scheme. What's God's answer to that? Well, right now it's you and me. Wherever darkness is, we get to shine. Wherever death is, we get to offer life. Wherever division is, we get to offer love, right? <clears throat> Don't miss this. this. This is the message of the book of the Revelation. We can get caught up all we want to in all the end times stuff, but this is the message. And, and so I want us to understand Satan's schemes as we see them unfold here and the rest of what takes place. Um, 
And so if we look for, to do that, just so we understand, that is the big picture. Uh, let, let's read it out, and then we'll come back to it. Uh, verse 11. And they overcame him. Uh, let, let's, let's start in verse um, Verse 10, then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before God day and night. There will come that time. We know that, right? And they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb, because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life even when faced with death. For this reason, rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Listen, Satan knows he doesn't have the long game. He, he knows he's going to be defeated. So what's he going to do? Just mess with God every every step of the way. Every, every one of his children he can mess with, he's going to mess with, however he seeks to do it. That's why Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This makes sense. I just want to make sure we're clear. Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman so that she could fly into the wilderness to her place where she was nourished for time, times, and a half time away from the presence of the serpent. That is a lot like what happens when, in, when Jesus says they're going to run to the hills, right? <clears throat> and they're going, to be, they're going to be covered there. But others are going to run to the hills and just ask, ask it to fall on them. But God does preserve his people, and this is what's going on, and this is what he's saying here. And it says this, And the serpent hurled water like a river out of his mouth after the woman, so that he might cause her to be swept away with the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon had hurled out of his mouth. So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commands of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. What are we reading in this? Well, we're reading that we should expect that in this life, Satan is going to attack us. We, we, we read it in, in verse 3. We see that one of the things he does is that uh, is he just tries, he tries to create death. Right? The red dragon came to try and create... Uh, he wants to devour. That, that's what he came to do, Right? Red dragon came to devour. And, uh, and so this, this is what's taking place. And so there's this, there's this devouring that he wants to do. So if we just stop to look through history, that's what he was seeking to do when he had Israel in Egypt. That's what he was seeking to do when, he, when, he, when they found themselves in bondage uh, to Babylon and to Persia and to all the others. That, that's what Satan was trying to do when he took a man named Hitler and decided to create uh, a havoc and create the Holocaust, right? That's what he's doing. If you were to open up uh, and just begin to look at what's going on in China and what's going on in Iran and what's going on in other places, persecution of the church is running rampant. In Iran right now, the persecution is so brutal there, uh, and it's it's. But you know what else is happening? God's doing His thing. God is right now in Iran. There's a sheep among wolves testimony of a pastor uh, who is in that area. He says we're seeing more dreams and visions. Our, our Muslim friends are seeing are having Jesus come to them in the middle of the night and to share with them and to to bring truth to them. See, they don't have the word of God, so he shows up because he is the word of God. You understand that? That's what's going on in China too, right? So whether we have this book or whether we don't have this book that we call the Bible, the word of God is written on our hearts and he will see to it that it comes to us, right? We, under, we need to know this. So that's what's going on. And you want to know what's going on in Iran right now? They are having visions. And there are people coming to Christ there. And there, it is the greatest flourishing movement of God that, that we've seen in, in so many years. And why is that happening? Because where, where death goes, God always brings life. And so, so this is, we should expect that. We should expect that. Hey, listen, <laughs> we don't even know what persecution is here. We can dabble in and act like you know, we're being persecuted. We're, 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 no, nobody's children are getting taken out of here and, and, uh, and crucified and killed. Not, not yet. Now, it will come. But, but we should see that, that that's what's going on and, and that there is martyrdom that's taking place. This is one of Satan's schemes. 
And then if we go on down to, uh, let me see where I am now. I got lost in everything, just getting excited about what's going on here. Uh, <clears throat> chapter 9. One of the things that he does is he seeks to deceive. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil uh, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. So you should expect not just that, that there's going to be this a, a, a desire for death, right? Listen, and you, do you, you see that? If you pay attention to what's going on, everybody's talking about we're overpopulated, and, and you see. Listen, what do you think the purpose of abortion is? I mean, that's just Satan trying to create death, right? That's all that is. Well, I don't make that a political thing. I'm just telling you that's what's going on. And so, so we see that. There shouldn't be starving people in our world today. We have enough food to feed the world three times over. It's there because Satan is trying to create death. And so he's thwarting it, and he's doing things, and he's moving in governments to keep those things from happening. I don't, don't hear me as a ranting, you know, old man. I'm just telling you, this is what's going on. The second thing he does is he's about deception. You, you want to know, does it not look to you like the whole world has gone mad? Like, like everybody is like, if they, they're, I, now the news is even mirroring what I've been saying for a long time. The story of the emperor's new clothes. It's like they're naked and we're all trying to pretend that they're not. And it's like the whole world's crazy, but we're supposed to believe, no, they're not crazy. You must be crazy. And are there times when you don't feel gaslit? Like, like all of a sudden, well, maybe I am crazy. You're not crazy. You're alive and you have light and you have life and you have love in you. And so we're not going to be caught up in the deception of the evil one. And we're not going to be deceived. The world can be deceived. You and me are. We have wisdom from above. We, we have truth in the, in the Word of God and the truth written in our heart. And so this, this deception, it happens. I don't know if you, hear, you know much about the uh, uh, deconstructionist movement. It's much like the Enlightenment movement. You know, Thomas Jefferson had his own Bible. You know that, right? He, there were things in there he didn't like. He literally got scissors and just cut out the parts he didn't like. And so, you, I don't know if you know that or not, but it, you can go see it if you go to the museum in the, of the Bible in, in Washington. It's there. Well, that's what the deconstructionists are doing. Oh, I don't like, that seems kind of harsh to, you know, this sexual perversion thing. Let's just, and, and so they're just, they're just cutting things out. You know what you're doing when you're doing that? Refashioning the God in your own image. It's just idolatry. Now, you can act like, oh, man, they're, maybe they're right, right? Listen, your kids and my kids who get on TikTok, they're being indoctrinated with this deception that says God loves everybody and all roads go to heaven and all of those things. And if you're not careful, this is what happens. But you and me aren't deceived like that. We are the light. That's why we repel darkness, right? That's what we do. And so we aren't deceived, and we're not going to go along with the deception. I'm not. I'm just not, I'm not going to play those games. They're, I don't want to sound like I'm political. I'm, there are two genders. Yeah, that's how God made us. I'm not, I'm not playing the game. You know, I'm going to be sensitive to you, but I don't care about your pronoun. I really don't. And, and none of us should. Don't, now, don't hear me ranting. This isn't politics. This is just, this is, what, this is what Satan is doing. And you and me have no idea what's going to happen to the next generation because they bought into this silly deception. And they've marred and scarred their body and abused it and destroyed it, which is exactly what Satan wants to happen. You know why? Because we're the Imago Dei. Everybody born was, is made in the image and likeness of God. Why did he say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? And why, why is it that if, when a man kills, that man must be killed? Because he killed someone made in the image and likeness of God. There's value in this. Satan's trying to destroy that value. That's his deception. And you and me, we, we can't miss that. False doctrine is deception, man. That whole, the whole Muslim thing, boo, pick any of them. It's just deception. So, hey, that's the angel of light doing his thing. And so you and me need to be smart and wise and understand those things. And then he comes down to, uh, to verse 10, and he tells us this. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of, of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before God day and night. What else does he do? He's the accuser. How many times have you woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning and felt like you were the worst person on the planet? That there's no way you could be a Christian because you lied today, or you got angry today, or you did. And that's the accuser of the brethren. 
This is what he does. This is what he constantly does. You're not good enough. You're not worthy enough. You should doubt your salvation. You know where all those thoughts come from? The accuser of the brethren. Listen, you got to know who you are. You got to know that God is never, ever mad at you, ever. When you put your faith and trust in Christ, you got the peace of God. You will never not have the peace of God in your life. Whenever you feel like you don't have the peace of God, that's the accuser of the brethren saying you don't deserve it, you can't have it, you don't see it. You're also never without complete forgiveness that floods you daily. The blood of his son constantly cleanses you from all sin. Satan wants you to believe that you sinned and then somehow you've messed up the apple cart and you've got to kind of figure out how to earn your way back into that thing. But my Bible tells me that he's taken my sin and he's scattered him as far as east is from the west. That he's buried him in the sea and he remembers them no more. That because I, have, I am one who agrees with him, he is constantly forgiving me of my sin. I, I, I'm never going to be held accountable for my sins like ever, ever. This is true. But see, the, the accuser of the brethren wants you to think something different. You are good enough not because of you, but because of who Christ is. And you are valuable to his kingdom. You do have a purpose. You cannot ever not have a purpose. I mean, I know that because it says that when David fulfilled the purpose of God, that's when he went to heaven. As long as you're here, you got purpose. You have value, you have purpose. So quit being deceived that you're not good enough. You need more training. You need more whatever. No, you don't. You have the word of God. You have the, you have the uh, power of the Spirit of Christ. You have the blood of Christ, and you have your own testimony. So that, we just read that, right? And so this is, this is what we need to see. The, thir the, uh, the, 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 the third, fourth thing we're going to see is in verse 13. And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. And so we're just going to see persecution. It's coming. That's what we're seeing in China. Right now, that's what we're seeing in Iran right now. That's what we're seeing in pockets of Africa right now. Great persecution. Where, where, wherever that comes, though, it's like, it's like all that does, the, the, the blood of the saints just waters the ground and more and more people come to Christ. It's, an, it's a crazy thing that takes place. We're not seeing that because there's not a lot of persecution going on here. We're just in this, we've just been uh, misted on by some deception and fog. We're just asleep, the American church is. We're just comfortable with a little lullaby. You know, we feel good. We're just, we're cozy, right? That's it. There's no power in our church. Not our church, but in the church, in America, because we don't need you. It, we, we don't need God. We, hey, we, we got our praise music. We got our, our TED Talks. We got it all, right? The persecuted church, they got nothing but Jesus. They, they, don't, they, they don't even have the Bible all together. They just have to bring it. Did you realize how long it takes the persecuted church to gather? It's like a 24-hour time span just to gather because they can't just all show up at one place. They have to slide in. Just study what's going on in those secret churches and you'll realize and, and, and that, that there's weeping when someone just un, brings out one page of the Scriptures and they can read it and look at it. They're just, they're just enamored with that thing. They worship God because of those things. And so persecutions come. Then it says, if we read it right in verse 15, it says, And the serpent hurled water like a river out of his mouth after the woman that she might be caused, uh, cause her to be swept away with the flood. If we go to Psalm, let me go to Psalm 27. I want, to, I want you to see a parallel here. Um, I'm sorry, Psalm 124. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel say, had it not been the Lord who was on our side, when people rose up against us, they would have swallowed us alive. When their anger was kindled against us, then the waters would have flooded over us. The streams would have swept over our souls. Then the raging waters would have swept over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Our souls have escaped like a bird from the trapper's snare. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
I think that's got to be what John was thinking or, or, or what God was thinking as he gave him that. These, these waters that we're looking at most likely is armies, that just this war that's going on. And and so and then you remember we we read in Revelation about the eagle the two eagles that come and they they that's what this is there's there's this deliverance there's always this deliverance he delivers us from persecution and he delivers us from getting swallowed by the armies that come after us listen it's going to come and this, you should expect it and then this is the this is the kicker and we're done um, verse let's get back to it. verse sixteen but the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon had hurled out of his mouth. So the dragon was enraged that it could not destroy Israel. And it went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commands of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. It's going to expect, there's going to be, a, listen, you, right now the whole world hates the Jews, right? I mean, you see that. Everybody hates the Jews. Well, they're going to, they're going to turn, they're going to start hating you and me too. So we should just expect it. This is, this is the overall flyby, chapter 12 is, of what's going on in this world. And at every turn, God has thwarted all of those things. He is the deliverer, right? And so you and me know that we're going to face this onslaught, and we're just going to bear it. And if, if we go through death, we go through death. If we live through it, we live through it. Either way, we, we serve him. So this is the message of Revelation chapter 12. <clears throat> Glad you came by today so we could just talk about it all right man let's uh let me pray for us and we're gonna sing a song out of here thank you father for the day for the truth of this book for the reminder that uh while it may look dark here there is deliverance and that uh the, the, the kingdom of god is coming and it will establish itself on this earth and we will be a part of that so father don't let this be a time of discouragement let it just be a time of sobriety where we know that, that we have a target on us, but we will be found faithful, that we will not fall to deception and to the false accusations that the evil one wants to throw at us, that we will not run from persecution and all of those things that take place, but we will stand firm because uh, we can stand because of the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of the saints. And so thank you for that, Father, we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.